Hi everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to follow along the journey of making this dress in real time with me, both on Instagram and YouTube, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. You get to choose how much to pledge per month, and you will receive live updates both on my close friends' Instagram stories and access to all of the YouTube videos right now. Hope you enjoy the video. Here's what we're dealing with so far. I've just ironed open all of the seams and yeah, <laughs> now what I am thinking of doing is figuring out where I want to rip out my longer stitches to create the opening for the skirt. I haven't actually really thought about it yet. Um, hmm. Let me think about it and I'll get back to you on camera. <laughs> okay, I've had a think about it. But first of all, I just want to mention that these two panels here are the center back panels. I've just basted across um, to match where all the other basting stitching is. So I could just chop off the top part of this excess fabric, which I know I don't need, so I'm fine to chop that off. Cool. So what I'm thinking is opening up the side seams for, for the openings to be at the sides and I'm thinking of doing it for both sides um, just so the slit doesn't have to go too far down if it was just to be on one side um, because the whole point of the openings up on the skirt is to be able to get the skirt over the hips and if there are two openings then I assume there would they don't need to be as deep. We'll see. Um, so this here, I believe, no, that's not a side seam. So these are the center backs. That's a, that's a side back. Hang on, is that right? Yes, which means it's this seam here, which I would be opening up, I think. Which is really strange because for some reason these ones are coming apart more so than more so than these ones which I thought these were the ones that I Oh well. Hang on. Let me let me open this up and see. Yes, I was right. So the ones that have already started opening up because I didn't backstitch, these are in fact the side seams. So I've got the skirt like this on my um, ironing board. So I hope this will make sense when I go to explain it. But basically, those two pieces where the purple basting stitching is are the center backs. That's a side back. That's a side back. And then obviously here and here where the stitching has started to come out because they were just long basting stitches with no um, back stitching. Those are where I'm thinking the side openings will be. That's a side front panel, that's a side front panel, and that's the center front panel. So I'm going to go ahead and open up these side seams uh, a few inches down, I'm not sure how far, but enough to get it over my dress form and start figuring out this situation. <laughs> I've just 
put the skirt on the dress form uh, really roughly and just sort of pinned just above the waist so the natural waistline is probably around here somewhere but I've just pinned the fabric on you can see the openings at the sides and on the other side as well and there isn't much seam allowance here uh, keep in mind this one has been folded already over like all of the other seams and I am going to just play around and see what I think would work best for closures I'm sort of thinking there could be a drawstring not a drawstring but like ties so you tie the front first and then you tie the back but I don't know I think it would be good to have two ways of securing it so having it like tie in the front and then tie in the back because it is so heavy um, it's it's really heavy because I'm not sure that hooks and eyes like if there was well, not hooks and eyes, hooks and bars. If there was just a hook and bar there and a hook and bar here, and then, you know, somehow this would like close up, whether I put in like a placket and whatever. I just feel like hooks and eyes at the sides would not be secure enough. I feel, for, for this, I feel like ties would work better. And also ties would mean that it would fit like multiple sizes as well like you don't have to necessarily be one size only um, so that's what I'm thinking but I'm just going to like play around a bit and see what I think I will do and as you can see the back <laughs> the back pieces need to be hiked up a bit so they don't form this weird gaping thing so obviously the back needs to be pulled up a bit higher around there so I'll just fix up that and I will see what I end up doing also I just found like this big black mark across the front of the dress which is unfortunate good thing there's going to be loads of um, netting and flowers over the top to disguise it and also it drapes really nicely in the front so yeah you can hardly see it and I'm so pleased with how these seams turned out look how good that looks like it's so flat I'm actually also very pleased with how the seams look um, how they look from the inside as you can see well I mean this is a bit dodgy but come on that's pretty good <laughs> so yeah that that's where I'm at so far I'm just going to do a time lapse of me fiddling around until I figure out something. <laughs> Okay, so what I've done is pinned so that everything lays nice and straight, especially at the side seams. And these points here, like they just touch. And keep in mind that I am pinning this a bit higher than the natural waistline on my dress form, simply because I know that the dress form has a really tiny waist. And also, I just want to 
like I, I don't mind having a higher waist. I know that this will be tied at my natural waist, but I also just, I don't know, I find that doing it this way is helping me. I, I don't know, I can't explain it, but I'm just pinning a little, a little bit higher than the natural waistline and for some reason that seems to that seems to be working for me, so that's what I'm sticking with. So as you can see, the side seams are nice and straight, so not like before. And then I just roughly pinned around the waist or where I think the waist will be across the whole thing. And then I also went in underneath those um, pins and based uh, basted all along there. So I've just took some purple thread and did some long basting stitches all across there. I think what I am going to do now is I should probably actually create a waistband, shouldn't I? Um, I might actually go to my scrap fabric and pull out some material to actually form rectangle waistbands, one for the back panels and then one for the front panels and then I'm thinking that it will have ties rather than hooks and eyes simply because I think that will be more secure and more versatile but I could be wrong we'll see I am going to go and get some extra fabric now so I just pulled this from under my bed because that's where I keep my material <laughs> um, and these will do perfectly um, for the waistband of the dress or the skirt I should say. So here I've got some cotton broadcloth and the same satin so I am going to cut two rectangles um, one for the front one for the front of the dress and one for the back of the dress and that should be good. Um, and I'm probably going to cut them maybe four inches wide or so. Yeah, I think that sounds about right. Okay, I'm going to go do that. Now, call me crazy, but I'm actually going to hand baste these cotton and satin layers together because it worked so well for the skirt panels. I am willing to baste these as well. Um, so yeah, 
I'm just doing some long basting stitches like I did with the skirt panels and I'm just using some purple thread. So what I've got here, I've got the two rectangles for the waistband, two of the satin and two of the cotton and then I just ironed, ironed the pieces so they're all nice and flat and laid laid the satin piece over the top of a cotton piece and then same with the other one. Basting it shouldn't take too long, it's just the waistband. I'm actually also thinking of adding a pocket into the skirt now that I, um, I just saw a video of um, a costumer put pockets into her Victorian ball gown and considering that my skirt is sort it's not really Victorian but it is the most Victorian skirt I've ever made I must say and I really would like to put a pocket into the dress I think that would be a nice feature anyway I'm going to continue basting all around these edges and I will come back on camera once I'm done. So I've just taken the skirt off the dress form. You can see the line of purple stitching that I put in also on the back as well. So that's the front and then this is the back. I am going to trim off the excess fabric, I think. So maybe, let's see, one inch, I think. Let's go with one inch above the purple line. And that purple line is not very precise as well, so. So that's the front part done. And then same thing with the back. Let me just move. I don't want to cut into the front portion of the skirt, so let's just move that out of the way. So this is the back. Um, and it's this purple line that I am going to follow. This is actually quite scary because <laughs> I've put so much work into it already. I don't want to like make a mistake. just bring that like that there we go that'll do <laughs> okay so now on to the waistband so here's one waistband piece basted together I am going to Wow, my waistbands are very long. <laughs> I don't need that much. Hmm. What the heck, I'll just pin it right in the middle. Um, hmm. So I'm thinking... What am I thinking? I sew right sides together from the inside and then 
this will flip over and then I will top stitch from the outside like that. That's what I'm thinking. Hmm. I just don't know how much seam allowance I need because I feel like this will have to come down as well to that purple line. So maybe flip it this way, put this on top like so and I think I am lit literally just going to stitch across with a one inch seam allowance because I have no other ideas at this point. So I'm going to pin that in place The skirt is so heavy that it keeps pulling down on my ironing board. Okay. sew that down with that one inch seam allowance, cut off the seam allowance and then f turn over and fold over, obviously that seam allowance will have disappeared, and then fold over the edge and then that will form the waistband. Oh, and I'm also going to put ribbon inside and then the ribbon can tie on the two ends. I think that's what I'll do. Okay, let me just pin the other waistband. I'm surprised at how curved this shape is. Actually, should I be? That's how circle skirts work. Um, Lol, my waistband is cut on the straight. Um, interesting. Would it be okay for my waistband to also be on the straight? Hmm. Or should I just cut a facing for it? Maybe I should cut just a facing for it. Hmm. I don't know. How about if I just sew it like that, straight on, and then I just sew? I could do that. What the heck, I'm going to do that.
but I should probably sew from the other side. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, if I do a facing for this side, then I think I should just do facing for the other side, for the back panels, rather than a straight waistband. I think this would lie much nice, nicer, nicer on the body. Hmm. Okay, let's just leave that one for now. Go back to the back part of the skirt. Okay, so it seems like the back part of the skirt is basically straight. It's not very curved, so I think it's fine that it is on the straight. Um, but whereas the front panel is very curved, so I'll sew it as if I was sewing a facing rather than a waistband. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Um, gosh. Maybe I should base this first to make sure I don't make any mistakes. <laughs> or I could just sew from the other side. I could sew following the seam on this side. Yeah, how about I do that? So if I pin, hang on, I need to flip this around the other way. And I'll just pin it on this side so then I can follow the pins when I go to sew it. And I'll follow that purple stitching line. I think the purple stitching line is, it's not perfect, but it's my best bet. I don't know what happened there, but why is this so low compared to this part? There. Now I can take out all of these pins. Oh, you can't even see what I'm doing. Oh, wasn't that great? Here we go. Cool. So, what I am going to do is so following the purple stitching line and my pins for the front facing of the dress, and then for the back, I am literally just going to sew a straight line across whoop, across there and I'm going to sew both of those with one inch seam allowances and then hope for the best. 
Okay, let's do this. So I have the one inch marking on my sewing machine plate. So I'm going to follow that along this raw edge and hopefully that will be okay. Now I should probably stitch Hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to stitch. Okay. I feel like this is a big mistake. I'm not going to back stitch. Or maybe I should. Okay, well, screw it. I'm doing a back stitch. That's secure now. I'm actually so glad that I. Um, I and all of my seam allowance is open because it helps a lot. Keeps everything nice and flat. So this is the center back scene. Uh, since I did sew that with quite wide stitches and I didn't secure it, I, and it's also very heavy, I'm going to back stitch over this part to make sure that it's extra secure and it can hold up all of that weight. Cool, and then I'm just going to continue That's the first one done. Hopefully I didn't ruin it. And now for the second. The second piece, which is over here. And this one, I'm just going to sew it like I were to sew facing because it's that curved shape. I don't know if I should do this. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm just back stitching on the parts where I really want to make sure it won't rip or come undone. So, and I'm just eyeballing my seam allowance. I'm trying to keep like a pinky width distance um, between that raw edge and my foot. Again, I'm coming to a part where I want to make sure it's extra secure. So I back stitch over it and I can just continue 
all the way through. That is not a one inch seam allowance, my gosh. There's my one there and my fabric is over here. Whoopsies. Okay, maybe I should do that last part again. Um, yeah, it looks like when I got towards the end I went and tapered off. Where is my seam ripper? Maybe I could just undo it with scissors. Or I could just um, not undo it at all because it's such a tiny seam. So that seems to be more of a one inch seam allowance. Just trim off these threads. And yes, I'm using different colored thread in the bobbin. Okay, let me just move this out of the way. Oh. Okay, so here's what we've got for the front piece. You know what? Mm, maybe I'm just going to focus on the back piece since that's a bit simpler and easier to manage since it's straight. And so once I know what I'm doing here, I can then figure out what I'm gonna do on the harder one. Okay, so. Hold up, let me get my other scissors. Okay, I've got my big scissors. So now I can trim off the excess seam allowance. I'm also thinking I can just trim off this and this because I do not need that. Like I really do not need that. Um, I'm just wondering how much to trim off. Hmm. Okay, I think I'll start with I'll start with this. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm doing the scary thing. So I'm just trimming off the first lot of fabric at the waistband in the back of the skirt. That's gone. And then for the next lot, hmm, because I really want this to, I really want it to be thin. So I'm thinking, I will trim this down even thinner than the one that I just did. That's, uh, or is that a mistake? Because I want, yeah, okay, I'm doing, okay, let me trim off. I'll trim off this, oh my gosh. Okay, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Okay, it's gone. That's gone, and the other side. Okay, that's gone too. Okay, 
Now I am going to I'm probably going to trim this one so it's really tiny. Yep, I'm doing it. So I'm trimming the part behind the seam I just trimmed and I'm trimming it so it's about half the width of the one in front of it and this is so I can keep the bulk to a minimum. what I have is one very tiny seam allowance and another not so tiny seam allowance but still tiny. As for this raw edge, um, so this is definitely going to fold in and then over like that and then it will cover up the purple stitching which is the waistline. So. I'm assuming that it will come down to about just past the purple stitching and then that should be good. But this is way too much fabric, so hmm. Hold up, I need to think about what I'm going to do. I'm I could bring this part inwards like that and then fold this over and then fold it over but I feel like that's just really, really thick. I mean, look at that, that's thick. I'm not sure if I want it to be that thick. Hmm. Or I could try and keep the bulk so it's kept out out of this area, if that makes sense. And then fold that over. I don't really like that though. Hmm. Oh, and I did want to insert ribbon as well. That's the other thing. So this is the ribbon. Oh, here is the ribbon. This is the ribbon, which matches my fabric pretty much perfectly. So I'm very pleased about that. I actually bought the ribbon before I even knew I was going to make this dress. So that's, that's cool. Um, how much ribbon do I need? This is to tie the back portion of the dress. I'm just placing the ribbon around my waist now to see how much I would need. Okay, I'm just going to chop it off to about there. Hopefully that's okay. That should be fine. Snip. Okay, so this is the ribbon. And let me just find the center of it, which is about here. So I basically want to insert this ribbon and really secure it into the dress so it won't come out at all. So that's what I'm going to do there. Pop the ribbon in place there, I think. And then when I go to sew this, 
waistband. Let's pretend that the seam allowance is not that big. But when I go to sew the waistband and top stitch it, I'll put some top stitching on the top and as well as the bottom of the waistband, I think. Yeah. Okay. So let me just pin the ribbon in. I'm just pinning it behind the seam allowance. I still don't know what I'm doing with this uh, this part. I have seen some waistbands finished off where they um, so like they flip this part outwards this way, and then they they sew this part shut, and then that way they can flip it right side out like that. Is that right? Yeah, they, they do this thing. <laughs> Hang on. I need to... I need to do the thing. So they do that, and then they sew this. Excuse my dodgy pinning. And then they flip it this way. Oh, but that would get rid of my, my, oh, I know what I need to do. Hang on. I would need to pull my ribbon out to this side. Then I would Then I would sew this. And then when I bring it outwards this way, my ribbon is secure. Or at least that's how I think it works. I just don't think it's as secure as if if my ribbon were to just be coming out like that.
Okay, I think I've figured out what I need to do. I need to sew this part down first and then I can place the ribbon on top of that, fold this up, fold this down, fold it again and then top stitch and my ribbon will be secure in there and it will be secure all throughout the waistband as well. So I think that's what I need to do. Gosh, that took too much thinking. <laughs> hmm. So this is what the waistband looks like for the front panels. Um, as you can tell, it's been sewn on the curve. Now I am going to trim off the seam allowance, the excess seam allowance. We just make sure that this is all lying flat and there's no material caught un underneath it. Okay, so I'm going to start by trimming off the top, topmost, the thickest layer of fabric. Sorry about the sirens in the background. There's always sirens around here. So that can go and then next I'm going to trim this seam allowance so it sits just behind the one I trimmed and this is again to minimize bulk. Okay, so this is what I've got. Just trim a bit more here. As you can see, the seam allowance on the underside is a lot thinner than the one on top. To minimize bulk, let me just trim off these flappy bits because I don't need them. Unless I do. Was this a mistake? Too late, it's gone. And the other side. That's gone too. Okay, so I think before I do anything else, I am going to bring this over to the ironing table and I'm going to iron open Sorry, I'm just trimming away all this fluff. It's so annoying. I mean, look at this. I am glad that I ended up finishing off those skirt seams because 
otherwise they'd be doing this awful thing. Okay, so I said that I was going to take this over to the ironing board and I'm just going to iron open um, this part so it lays nice and flat. Oh, here's what the um, inside of the the skirt looks like now from the front. So this is the front piece um, and this is what the inside looks like. So I'm hoping that that will be turn, turned over like that and this will form the waistband along the front edge. I think that's going to turn out quite nicely. Maybe I shouldn't say that, I'm speaking too soon. Like that. So, yeah, I'm going to take this over to the ironing board now. Um, I'm just going to do that off camera and then I'll be back right here at the sewing table. Okay, I'm back. So I've just ironed um, the waistbands of both the back and the front. So they're lying nice and flat now. And I've ironed all of the seam allowances upwards. So they're all going towards the waistband or they're all going to be enclosed in the waistband, sorry. So that's what's going on there. So this is the front and this is the back waistband. I'll start on the back first since that's probably easier because it's straight unlike the front which is very curved so what I'm going to do is insert ribbon into the waistband um, so I can use the ribbon to tie off the dress and I'm just I was thinking about whether or not to use ribbon or to use cotton tape. So the only cotton tape I have is this one here, um, which is about the same width as my ribbon, except obviously the ribbon is much thinner, so the ribbon would be less um, like visible under the dress, if that makes sense. Um, but the cotton tape might be more stronger. Hmm. I'm contemplating which one to use. Look, I'll just go with the ribbon for now. And if the ribbon is not strong enough, will it be strong enough? Because this back part is super heavy. Maybe I should use cotton tape. Hmm, these are the, the sorts of things that I should think about. Hold up, let me see how thick this would be if I tied it into a bow. So that's how it is if I tied it into a bow and that would be sitting in the front of my dress. Hmm. Unless I put... I could do what they did in Victorian times so where they put like a hook on the corset. Hmm. Honestly, I don't know which to use. Ribbon would be prettier <laughs> and more discreet, but I don't know if ribbon would be able to hold up all of that train. So this is what the ribbon would be like if I tighten a bow. Surely the ribbon would be able to hold it up. These are the sorts of things that I need to think about before I come onto camera. Ribbon. 
ribbon is a lot more discreet. Look, I'm going to go with ribbon, and if the ribbon does not work out, then at least I know for next time, if there is a next time, and I can always just attach cotton tape at a later stage instead if the ribbon does not work out. But I'm going to use the ribbon for now. So this is the center of the ribbon and I'm going to place that under the seam allowance right there and I'm going to pin that in place. And what I'm think what my thinking is here is that if the ribbon is placed behind the seam allowance and then I top stitch on top of this double like I, I top stitch on it twice um, then the ribbon will be extra secure and the ribbon will basically be holding all of this back train part up actually now I'm really starting to contemplate whether or not I should use cotton tape instead of ribbon how strong is a ribbon? That is the question. I'm going to tighten to a bow once more. would literally be the only thing holding the skirt up. Maybe that's why they used hooks and eyes <laughs> in Victorian times. Hmm. Actually, scrap that. I am not going to use ribbon. I've just had another idea. I am going to use cotton tape, but I'm going to use uh, this cotton tape which I would usually use for the waist stay in a corset, but I'm going to use this as the waistband instead for the back. Now I'm just going to stop these raw edges from fraying by sewing them. Let me just do that off camera. So I've just sewed, I've just sewn the cotton tape um, shut like this. So I just folded a little bit of the raw edge in, sewed it, and then folded it, folded it folded it, oh my gosh, I can't speak, folded it again um, and then stitched once again to secure that in place. So basically this will go around the waist and then I'm going to attach a hook and bar in the front and I've also made this so it can be um, adjusted to a larger waist as well. So this is not a corseted waist measurement for this cotton tape. So for a corseted waist, it'd probably cross over about this much or so. And then for a normal like 28 to possibly 30 inch waist, um, it would close around here. Um, so yeah, that is what I am going to do. So now I am going to find the center of this cotton tape, which is there. And I am going to place that where I was putting the ribbon just before. So just behind the seam allowance there and pin that in place. And I'm really trying to get right up close to the actual stitching of that seam. Funnily enough, this is actually going to create quite a bit more bulk than the ribbon or the thin cotton tape, but this will be so much stronger and I, will, I, I know that this will actually hold up, well, I don't know for sure right now because I haven't tested it, but I'm pretty certain that this will actually hold up the really heavy train.
So I just pinned this all down and then I realized I probably should have pinned it from the opposite side so I could see where I'm top stitching. <laughs> um, let me put all the pins in the other way. That's better. I'm now going to do the exact same thing for the front for the front panel waistband. Um, so you can see the front is actually really strange in comparison because it is curved. Um, I don't know if you can see that. And this is sort of cut like facing. So the it will look nice once all of this has been trimmed and then folded over. But for this part, I'm definitely going to use ribbon because the front is going to tie around to the back and the ties are going to be visible from the outside of the dress. So for that reason, I want it to be pretty ribbon. Now this ribbon is like way too long, but I'd rather way too long than too short. <laughs> and also it is a trained dress, so the ribbon can't be too long. Um, I'm going to flip this over and put the center of the ribbon. I also just realized this is not double sided. Um, okay, I'll place the right side of the ribbon down in the center. And like what I was doing with the cotton tape is I'm just placing the ribbon really far up close to the seam and I'm going to pin that and I'm going to pin it from the opposite side like I was supposed to and I just realized I probably should pin it this way so I can take the pins out as I go. When I go to sew it, that is. So I'm just going to continue pinning the ribbon um, the same way I did the cotton tape. Okay, so that's all pinned now. I am going to sew along the inside of the waistband on both the back and the front panels. Um, and I'm going to sew quite closely to the existing seam, but not too close to the point where I'm not catching the ribbon. But I do want to sew close enough that I am catching this first lot of seam allowance, as well as the ribbon. So. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I haven't finished sewing the waistbands on, but I just wanted to try it on first and I've realized I made a big mistake. Basically, I didn't cut far enough down on both the front and the back. Sorry, ignore the mess in the background. 
I didn't cut far enough down in the front or in the back to make sure that the waist, like the measurement of the actual waist of the skirts, um, fit my waist. So when I was doing it on the dress form, I was doing it like I was doing it a tad bit higher than the natural waistline on the dress form, which I thought would be fine to go with, but it turns out it's not. It's actually way too small. Um, so like if you can see that the back comes around with the cotton tape and stops about there, and then the front panel, when the front panel is tied up, it won't actually meet it won't actually meet here, which is what I wanted. So I'm going to have to cut further down and thank goodness, like the dress is super long. So I actually can afford to do that. Um, but I'm going to have to make basically redo the whole waistband thing, but further down and you know, the further down you go, um, the more, the more waistline measurement you will have because of the way I cut the skirt panels. Um, so that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. I'm going to call it a day um, because it's already, the sun's already gone down and it's best not to sew when you're tired and especially when you've reached a frustrating point like I have just now.